for neuropathy and chronic pain. And I'm standing outside the operating room here, as you can see, and I'm about to go in and do some procedures on a lady that has had restless legs for pretty much all of her life, uh, well over 30 years. And it's become very severe. And uh, she's here for surgery to open up some uh, tight nerve tunnels. And part of what we do during these procedures, and you're gonna be able to go in here and watch some of this, we actually do nerve monitoring. So in other words, we believe that in most patients with restless legs, we're able to open up specific nerve tunnels that have become too tight. It's almost like doing carpal tunnel surgery. And by getting rid of the pressure on those nerves, the nerves work better and restless legs can go away. And we've been doing this for quite some time, but what you're gonna be seeing is called intraoperative nerve monitoring. And it's simply testing the nerve before the tunnel is opened. And then we measure how much of a signal goes into the patient's muscle. And then we open the nerve tunnel, get rid of the pressure, and then do it again. And we usually can find that there's significant improvement of nerve function. And it's measured by seeing how much of a signal is going into the patient's muscle. So that's really good objective evidence. So not only are we hearing patients say how much better they're doing, but the machine's telling us that they're doing really well within minutes in the operating room. And it follows that many of these people are better within two or three days in many cases. So stay tuned and we'll be going inside in a minute. Because you, you can see we're in the operating room and now we're testing this nerve. And you can see the muscles of the foot are twitching and the leg muscles. And we're testing a muscle here to see what the baseline number is. That's the starting number before the tunnel's open. Okay, let's go. 1880. And that number is going to be uh, 1880. Mm -hmm. So again, 1880 is the baseline number. And uh, the significance of that, I don't have time to go into, but that means it's not a super healthy nerve, but it's fairly healthy. So these numbers can be even lower than that. So we'll pause for a second, and then we'll come back and we'll show you at the end of the surgery if that number's gone up very much. Okay. So now we're at the end of the surgery, and we've opened up the nerve tone. We're gonna test uh, this nerve, this muscle, and we're gonna stimulate the, the nerve with this stimulating probe. The patient, again, isn't feeling this, they're numb. And we're going to see what you don't see the leg contracting, the muscles contracting, but we're going to see what kind of change we have. We had in the beginning, we had 1880. We're going to see uh, where we end up. We lift off 2870. So the final number is 2870, and the beginning number was 1880. So Again, we went from 1,880 up to 2,870. So that's, uh, sometimes we see our height numbers even bigger than that, you know, with a bigger change, and that's pretty good. So, so again, this is objective information that we get from these tests to kind of show us that in the operating room, these nerves are improving their function immediately within minutes. And indeed, many patients say the same thing after a surgery within two or three days, they can notice as much as 80 to 100 percent improvement of the rest of the leg symptoms. So, again, I hope really this was educational, helps to show you that these nerves are dysfunctional and they do need, uh, you know, to get rid of the pressure. And that's why I call this sometimes restless leg compression syndrome because in many cases compression is the leading cause of your restless leg. So, thank you for taking the time to watch, and hopefully uh, you've learned something from this video.